Hi everyone and welcome to module 14 in this Django course. Now, the last three modules have all been about creating an e-commerce app. In this module, we'll be wiring up the front end so we'll actually see the fruit of our labor in the screen, in the browser. I'm excited, um, it's taken quite a while to get to this point. So let's jump straight into it. Like I said before, I'm here every step of the way. Let's go. Okay, the screen opens up on GitHub as normal. This is the main repository for the course. Um, you want the link, it's in the description below. Whilst you're there, click like, add a comment, subscribe, click the bell, helps massively. Right, so in GitHub, go to main, put drop down of all of the branches, go to module 14. When it opens, open steps, then open module 14. Every single module has a step-by-step -step guide of what to do, when to do it. I'll be following along every step of the way. I have done all the way through this course so far. Let's go. I won't have this open up in GitHub. I like to do it in Visual Studio Code, as I say in every one of these videos. Here we go, it follows on from module 13. Is it paramount that your root directory matches my root directory? That's the first thing you'll find in all of these modules. Just make sure yours is exactly where it needs to be. If not, clone down the repo, just read the readme file then pull down module 14. You should be good to go. Okay, so this follows on from the last module. So module 10, 11, 12, and 13, four modules have all been about creating the back end for this e-commerce app. We've done the models, we've done the views, we've done the e-commerce manager, so the API manager. We've wired in the, we've created some template tanks, um, wired those in, done some static files, right? We're now expanding on that. We're gonna create the actual templates and some more JavaScript so that will be the final pieces of the puzzle so that user can add items to a cart, they can take that cart to a checkout, pay for it, save cards, come back, use that card again, and we manage stock and everything else. It's a real fully functioning e-commerce app. So let's jump straight into it. What we want to do is um, add a new file into this static file um, directory. Call this stripe. JS. In there, we want to add all of this Stripe code. Now, this is not a JavaScript tutorial. I don't profess to being a professional at JavaScript, but I've got pretty good at it over the years. And this is the JavaScript I use when tinkering with Stripe. Now, we'll be using this to create a form element in our checkout page, uh, which is from Stripe. You know, we pass through um, Stripe API key and it comes back with a token and it creates this element, happy days, right? Um, don't worry about the ins and outs of how that works, just worry about that it does work. <laughs> um, look, we're calling Stripe, so we're creating a variable Stripe by calling Stripe because we're installing Stripe in our base HTML in a few moments, pass through the Stripe, Stripe key. If you remember, we added the Stripe key to the context of the view. Okay, does that make sense? So Stripe key, we pass that through in e-commerce views in checkout view, okay? There we have it, look, Stripe key, okay? I mean, it won't be accessible as a variable as Stripe key until we add it as a variable in the base HTML. I'll show you how to do that in a few seconds, but essentially this is how we're, how we're creating a Stripe callable in JavaScript. Elements, Stripe elements, don't worry about any of this. Do you know, let's skip through it. Look, we're creating a few variables. Look, creating some CSS, making it look pretty. We're adding different CSS colors and what have you so it looks nice on the website. Card elements, again, don't worry about that. What we're doing, we're using Stripe JavaScript to create an element in our site that connects to Stripe via our back end. Okay, so it's an element that you look at, it looks pretty, you add your card details, fires to our back end, connects to Stripe via the SDK and the API and returns a response. Don't worry too much about the JavaScript. By all means, go through it line by line, but I'll end up tying myself in knots trying to work out what's going on here, right? So we've got um, add an event listener. So against the card element in the HTML, we've got a listener here, JavaScript listener to say, right, listen for change. When something changes, do something. Now that for me, if I remember rightly, that is add your, as you're writing a card number, Stripe saying, oh, no, 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 that's not a valid card number. So every time you change the card number, when it gets to a valid one, it will say, yeah, nice one. If it doesn't, it will say invalid. Okay, so that's what it's doing. It's a listener. 
form. So we create a form variable. So document get element by ID. We're looking for an ID of payment form, which we'll create when we create the template. We've got another, another event listener. So we're waiting for the submit to be clicked on the form. So when we say submit, go ahead and do all of this. So first of all, with Ajax, you always do this with a form. You prevent default. Default behavior in a HTML form will just fire off the form to the back end. All right, so, so fire off the form to the URL that you define as the action. We want to prevent that. We don't want to fire the form. Instead, we want to create a token. Okay. That's, don't worry about it. It's all Stripe stuff. Okay. These are the errors that we're, we're, we're rendering. And then we're calling this function here, which is Stripe token handler. And we've got Stripe token handler. And it's going through and it's getting the, the, the form ID, creating the form, getting a hidden element of the input, that would be the token. And we've got a set attribute. So we're setting attributes to the hidden input of type hidden the stripe token. This is the token we get. So remember, if it's a new card, we need to send a token ID to the back end. So we're expecting that. That's what it's creating. It's creating that token ID so that we can actually work with Stripe. Then form append child. So we append this input as a child to the form as another input, similar to a CSRF token, right? CSRF token is a hidden input that you don't see as a user, but it is there. We're expecting it in the back end. We're not expecting the token from a Django point of view, but the view is expecting a token ID as one of the inputs. Then we've got custom form submit post. Remember that? We added it here. Okay, so we're calling that. So we want to change the submit button to loading. Okay, we're waiting for a response. Load, 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 load. Uh, da, 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 da. And then we call the Ajax function. So this is post, and this is a post request. We got calling the URL pay. Now you don't have that, you could have that as the action in the form itself, but don't worry about that, we're not bothering. And then we're passing through. We don't need to pass through the card ID because we haven't got a card ID. This is a new card. We only pass through the token ID. So when we instantiate the API manager, or the e-commerce manager, if we pass through a token ID, the backend knows that this is a new card and we need to handle it in a different way to whether it is, is a card or source ID. Success, if it works, we change it back to a submit button and then we show an alert, okay? However, if it's an error, we'll just fire the console log. What's going on? So we see it in the developer console as to why it didn't work. Okay, that's the Stripe code, right? Okay, so now we're nearly there. We now have JavaScript for Stripe. So now it's an asynchronous call. We now need to create a Stripe CSS. So this is what's gonna really render our, our form nicely. So we're gonna, here, go okay, new file. There we go, new file, got CSS. We've already got main CSS, but this is specific for Stripe. So, uh, do you know what, let's go into GitHub. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. There we go. Copy that. If you're new, then you realize that it's quite difficult to copy all of the code from VS Code. It's a lot easier in GitHub. Sorry, if I sound a bit bunged up, I feel like I'm coming down with something. Right, okay, so we've got some CSS here. Look, it's just adding some bits and pieces to the different, I mean, this is this is Stripe specific CSS, but it's just making our form look nice and pretty. You haven't even seen a form yet, but believe me, when it's rendered, it will look nice. Okay, so we'll save that. We've got Stripe CSS, we've got Stripe JavaScript. These are our static files. These are what we're gonna be using to make the card element look pretty and actually process the payment. So this is the, this is how we submit the form using jQuery in the front end. We expect this in the back end in terms of an Ajax required decorator in our view. Process it, respond with a JSON response. Okay, where are we? Now we want to collect static. No, we're still not looking at these templates. Okay, I keep on saying we are. Okay, so let's collect static once more. Uh, I missed the T. <laughs> there we go. Yes, done. Well, we don't need to wait around for that to do that. I mean, it should only be moving two files, but ah, oh, there we go. It didn't take long. We moved all of the font awesome stuff earlier. So now it's nice and quick. Two files have been moved. We look in static files, which is our uh, our root. Um, we've now got stat as this and this. Okay, so we now have access to it in the, the front end if we use incognito. So that 
is it for this video. It's a little bit of a shorter one than the last one. It looks like in the next video we will be creating the template. So the final module will actually be looking at the fruits of our labor of this e-commerce app. So module 10 to 15, where we can actually see how this works in the front end. Like the video, drop me a comment, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell. It really, really helps. I love making this. I'm not making any money out of my YouTube channel. One day I might, who knows? I don't know, I don't really care. I'm doing this for fun. This is my hobby. I love doing it. I love giving back to the community. So please subscribe as it helps. It just shows me that I'm doing an all right job and your comments give me feedback to make more videos that you actually want to see. That's the end of module 14. See you in module 15.